Imagine sharing your life with somebody else. That idea is comforting, but also terrifying. We find comfort when surrounded by the familiar. Familiarity puts us at ease. And familiarity catches us off guard. We might even feel apprehensive and anxious. Let me show you what I mean by this. This is slide number one. Slide number two. Take a minute, observe your feelings. How do you feel when you see love in the first one? The symbol that we are all familiar with. If I'm not wrong, that's the symbol that we keep on posting on social media for. This, on the other hand, it makes me a little nervous, and I hope nobody asks me what that means. <laughs> but would you be surprised if I told you that slide number one and slide number two convey the exact same message of love? Because slide number two and its complexity makes us confused and we walk away. But when you give it some time and attention, you realize that dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin are the exact chemical hormones that we experience when we see love. So would you be surprised if I told you that there are circumstances, experiences, people that we don't get to meet the opportunity of meeting someone new, maybe experiencing an adventure in life, and the possibility of never finding love. But what is love? Love is so personal. It's an experience different for every single person. But universally speaking, love is a feeling made up of those hormones that make you a little bit illogical, but at the same time, it motivates you, gives you ambition to find purpose and meaning in life, to be a better person, to do better for you and others. You see the world in a different way. So if you ask an artist, what is love? In his experience, he would tell you that he would paint the most magical piece of art when he's in love. And a poet will go through the depth and the breadth and height to find the expression to show his love. Stories have been told, books have been written, and movies have been made over and over again to show us the different forms of love. Even one of the seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal stands tall and proud, depicting the love between a wife and a husband. But there's more. People who are in love, who nurture and are nurtured, live longer, happier, healthier lives. But love is also mysterious. When I was younger, I came from a place where love wasn't really spoken of, the romantic type. But it was well understood. So, growing up, I would see people of age getting married, usually by arranged marriages, and it worked out really well. But then as we move around the continents and countries and cities, that's harder to keep up with that ideology. So when I was about your age, a long time ago, I considered myself a bit of an introvert. I only worked and studied. And when I had a free class in between, 
I would go to the library, and that's where I would spend all my time. And you know, I wasn't complaining. <laughs> I wasn't seeking for anything. I was actually really happy. I had come from a, a situation where my parents were facing many hardships. They had lost their home, their jobs, their friends, and their extended family connections. So coming to Canada from Afghanistan was a second chance in life, so I was very happy. But then I faced my biggest fear. As usual, studying in the library, my head buried in my books, I was studying for Economics 101, I remember. And then I can sense somebody coming close to me. I look up, and of course it's that student, that engineering student, that has been catching my attention, not the kind that you think, not the one that you get a little spark, or you're feeling something passionate. The one where I would say, oh my God, there they are again. They were such a huge distraction. And they were nonchalant, they didn't care. They were just busy doing their assignments, and they would make a huge exit upon finishing their assignments, high-fiving, and cheerfully they leave. And this continued for days after days. But then, there he was, right in front of me, being rather polite. He was just asking me if I was studying for Econ 101, I couldn't lie, I was. So I continued the conversation, but I did feel a bit uncomfortable. Because I didn't want to be part of that distraction for the rest of the students in the library. But then, every day, we had these casual conversations. Unknowingly, they turned into these long storytelling. We would share our most pivotal moments while growing up. And then I realized I have shared way too much with him. I told him about how I lived in India for two years, and I know how to speak the language. He tested me, and then we connected. We started talking about Bollywood, and we were laughing at our favorite movies. And then I realized there was something special about him. He saw the world so differently. Everything was so simple. I felt emotional relief when I was with him, and I felt safe and secure. And then every day I would look forward to meeting him. And before I knew it, all those red flags, that he was from a different religion, a different culture, and by no means this was an arranged marriage. Those flags had faded away. But then, reality hits. And let me tell you, this was 24 years ago. Things were very different. And I still get goosebumps <laughs> thinking about that day when I had to tell my parents about how special he was. While they were expecting the first slide of that heart, I gave them that chemical formula. <laughs> the unfamiliarity caught them off guard. Silence. Days of silence. That deafening silence went on and on. I hadn't heard my voice for days and I hadn't heard theirs. I felt abandoned, ashamed for hurting them, but so proud of meeting him. And to choose between my parents and somebody I worship was no choice. I had become very selfish. I wanted all the love in all the forms. So the only option was to change their ideology, their philosophy, of how they saw only one truth. 
And let me tell you, it was an uphill paddle against their culture, tradition, and values. But here I am, married for 22 years, and I have three children and my family on my side. Everyone has their definition of love, and mine turned out to be this. The true value of love lies not in who we get, but in who we become. I became fearless. I became courageous. I started thinking outside of the box. And I started living my dreams and the life that was meant for me. And that's what I want for all of you here today. In this modern world of technology, we may not recognize the barriers that I did but we keep on creating new barriers. Like looking for the perfect guy, for the perfect girl. They have to check all the boxes. Otherwise, you don't have time. Our preconception of looking at a life partner as a commodity or as a threat can rob us of the opportunity of meeting and sharing a meaningful life together. Swiping back and forth, left and right, doesn't put love at their fingertips. We have to have meaningful conversations to get to know the person, to get in their minds, and then you'll just know. Someday we will all be gone. We will all become irrelevant. Nothing will matter. It won't matter what we look like, what we own, or what we have bought. The only thing that matters is what we built together, the home, the children, and the memories. Your life partner may not build you one of the seven wonders of the world, but if he makes you a cup of coffee and turns on the light when you're sitting in the dark, Congratulations, you have found your soulmate.